Mascaro, and today we're here to take a look at the Nest thermostat. Now, you, some of you may have recalled, we actually did a review a few weeks ago on the Nest installation and some of the features that actually came along with it. Today, we're actually here to talk about what some of the reporting and capabilities that the Nest has now that we've had it installed for a few weeks and collecting some of the data. We're actually gonna cut away here and take a look at some of the reports that it's collected over the last two weeks. You'll start to see the energy consumption. You'll also see how it actually starts to teach you some of the using that you have throughout the summer days and, and how maybe you can adjust your schedule to help save some energy and ultimately save some bucks. Without further ado, let's take a look. Um, let me start here from the beginning. So I've logged in via the website. Now, if, as I mentioned before, if you have an iOS device or an Android device, you can absolutely um, pretty much get the same interface on your iPad, your iPhone, or Android device. Um, just easier to do a little screen capture here from the, uh, from the iMac. So I uh, just wanted to show you what kind of data we've collected over here. So uh, first tab here you have is the uh, home button. And basically that's just a very generic screen that actually uh, you see your location name down here. Um, you can put personal information in there if you like. Also the city and the zip code, which will actually help the Nest learn a little bit more about your location. So it can provide, uh, as you can see up here, um, I just put in an arbitrary uh, zip code uh, for demonstration purposes, but it's saying that I live in Beverly Hills, California, which I assure you I don't. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be doing YouTube videos probably. Um, if you have multiple thermostats, you can actually come down here and you can manage them. I currently only have one and I have labeled it upstairs and that's completely interchangeable and customizable. Um, so I'm going to click over here and the upstairs thermostat and that'll actually start to give me more historical data related to that particular thermostat. Now currently I get a screen here showing me basically a replica of what my thermostat would look like if I walked over to it right now. Right now it's set to cool down to 75 degrees. As you can see here from the up arrow and the down arrow, I could adjust that and I'm gonna kick it down to 74 degrees. And now what's gonna happen is you're gonna see up here, there's a 75 degree hash mark that actually tells me that's the current temperature and it's gonna work its way down to 74 degrees. So now if you click back on the energy button down here, what you're seeing here at the bottom of the screen is a lot of historical data over the last few days, uh, actually the last few weeks. Now, the one problem I have with the Nest and uh, haven't contacted their tech support yet is it only seems to show the last 10 days of data. Now, I think it would be pretty cool if you could take this data uh, maybe export it to an Excel sheet and you can just keep a historical log. So maybe next year this time I can kind of compare it against my energy consumption and, and just, you know, do a study. Am I really saving money with all this information? I, I don't really know, um, to be quite honest with you. Uh, my electric bill seems to be a little bit lower, but it's also been um, slightly uh, cooler here in the nights uh, in the month of August, so a little bit unusual. But um, it is kind of fun to watch, uh, as you can see here, three and three quarters hours worth of cooling. That means my air conditioning actually ran for three and three quarters hours. Uh, on the 14th here, Tuesday, it ran for two and a half hours. On the 13th, uh, three and a half hours. Now, what I also find interesting about these uh, graphs here is you can click on them and you'll actually see very detailed information when the air conditioning went on. As you can see here, it went on here uh, and then it was off this entire time. And then you'll see it kicked back on a little bit later in the day. And you can start counting the hash marks and figure out what time it was. Uh, this looks like it was probably about four o'clock, maybe four or five o'clock. It kicked on a few times. And you also notice here at the top, um, when I left the home, it's noticed that I leave the house, let's say at about 8 a.m. And it knows that when I leave that I usually was setting the temperature to 79 degrees. So obviously I'm not home. Um, and then it would also notice a few hours later that I wasn't home because it wasn't detecting any motion. So this is the auto away icon showing that it kicked in. And then if you look a little bit further down here, you see a hash mark for 75 degrees. Somebody may have came home, turned the air conditioning down for the first few weeks to 75, and it actually started to learn that that's when our schedule kicks in and kicks off. So if you click over here on the schedule button, you'll actually see it's learned that the, we're a very simple household for the testing purposes, um, but at 79 degrees, it was going on about 8 a.m. And then it's about maybe 5.30, 6 o'clock, it was kicking down to 75. Again, we're a very uh, routine household for testing here. We wanted to have a bit of a controlled environment, so we're a bit regimented. Now, um, if you were a busy household with many people who were constantly adjusting it, this bar, I'd imagine, would have very 
uh, a different look and feel to it. Now, keep in mind, it has to go through two cycles in order for it to record something as a habit. So if you come in tomorrow with share on Tuesday, it shows it's 79 degrees and you just decide to turn it down. Um, it's not going to learn that program. It needs to happen for two full cycles. So you would have to do that Tuesday twice in a row and then it would actually learn that habit. Um, I'm noticing here that as I'm hovering over it, that down in the lower corner of the screen, you'll actually, lower left hand corner, if you'll take a look, you'll see that it says Friday 745. So it really gives you the time uh, when it starts to kick itself down. So very quickly, some of the other things you can get here uh, through the web integration, again, all, all of it available on the uh, iOS and Android device. You'll actually be able to um, see what your thermostat has actually learned about you. So uh, the auto schedule is currently active, which means that it's learned from me and it's always going to be learning from me and it will adjust accordingly. The auto away feature can be turned off. Some people ask if they have pets, if the auto away feature will just keep the thermostat running all day because if the pets are running around it, it's sensing motion. Um, so you can turn that off if you find that to be a bit troublesome. Uh, the time to temp feature, basically the Nest starts to learn how long it takes your house to get to whatever the desired temperature is. So if at eight o'clock uh, every morning you want your house to warm up to 80 degrees, it'll start to learn that it needs to kick on at 7.30 to get to 80 degrees. Um, so when you wake up, you're at the desired temperature. Down here, the leaf icon is basically just saying that it's, it's learned enough from your uh, climate inside your home um, and that it will tell you when you're actually at in a very efficient state. So if you set a temperature uh, to what it would consider an economical, and I'm not sure how it's calculated, you'll actually see this little green leaf appear in the screen of the thermostat. A little bit further down here, you have the Airwave technology. Now, Airwave is something that I think some thermostats have been doing. I don't know if this is something patented or, or some new inventive idea, but it was new for me. I had never heard about it until I, I purchased a Nest. And basically, this leaves your air conditioning fan on. It'll turn your cooling system off, the condensing unit, but it'll keep the fan on just long enough to get your house to the desired cool temperature. And I'd imagine it works the same way for the heat. Um, but a lot of times the condensing unit and the fan will shut off at the same time. Uh, in this case with airwave technology, it'll actually shut the condensing unit off, let's say five minutes before the desired temperature is reached. So you tend to save a little bit of energy there uh, because the remaining uh, coolant that's running across your coils um, is still being blown by the fan, but your condensing unit's not running and creating uh, a coolant that's actually never gonna be uh, used to its fullest potential. So it basically burns off what's left on the condenser uh, and the cooling coils. Uh, energy history down here, you'll see, like I said, it shows 10 days available. Uh, we've had this running now for several weeks, so I know that um, I'd have at least a month's worth of data. So clearly it only appears to be showing um, 10 days available. Tried clicking on it and, and nothing really happens. A uh, little bit uh, further down here, you have the away temperatures. So if you are using the auto away feature, it has a maximum uh, maximum minimum. So uh, I never want it to get any warmer in my house than 79 degrees. And I don't ever want it to get any cooler than 62 degrees. So if my house starts to get that cold um, at 62, it'll actually turn the heat on by itself. Uh, same in the summertime, I have pets, so I'd like to keep the house cool. Uh, I have very big dogs. And um, if for some reason I forget or the thermostat forgets or something happens, if the house ever heats up over 79 degrees, it'll actually start cooling down itself. Here in the equipment section, um, during the initial setup, you answer a few questions. What kind of fuel you're using? Uh, is it forced air? I have no, but I do have um, forced air for cooling. So this is under the heat section. Um, so I have degrees, it'll turn itself on automatically. Um, and here is a little snapshot of the wiring schematic that I have on my Nest thermostat. Again, answering some questions and checking off some boxes, it actually comes up with this default cookie cutter picture showing what your wire connection should look like. Technical info here, just your model number, serial number, uh, IP address, which I will be blocking out for the video. Um, and then down here is the thermostat lock feature. Um, this is if you have folks at home uh, that you fight with with the thermostat, you can actually set up a pin number and you can lock out the thermostat. So. If your wife likes to turn up the thermostat when you're not home, well, you can lock her out. I wouldn't say that's probably good advice for uh, for, for having a happy life when you get home, but 
Uh, good luck with that anyhow. And then the support tab, uh, Nest has done a really good job of putting a lot of publications on their websites about how to use the thermostat, how to hook it up. And um, this is just a, another quick access uh, guide to get you some support in case you need it. So that in itself is pretty much a snapshot of the Nest. Um, there really isn't, it's so intuitive that really if you can drive around on a web page or use an iPhone, you're going to love the uh, Nest thermostat. You know, some of the data is fun. I don't know if it's actually, again, saving me any money. I don't know if it's actually, if this, all this data that I'm collecting is, is doing me anything, but it is sometimes fun to actually look at. Um, just to see what your usage is like on the hot days. And maybe when you're home on a Saturday, maybe you'll be a little bit more conscious to turn the thermostat up or down, depending on uh, what your needs are, when you can see how much you're actually using. Um, so that's it. That's what the interface looks like. Uh, as I mentioned before, pretty much the same interface on the iOS and Android device. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you at erbreviews at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching. We really do appreciate it. Take care and have a good night.